side, put your, put your hands up. In the middle, put your, put your hands up. Left side, hands up. In the back, hands up. Sway in the morning, Shave for five, Rex Life Raj, he's with us right now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Ooh, to the show. What it do, what it, what it do and what it don't. Oh man, that was, that was a clip from the Sway Fest, when you listen to that man, what, 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 what mind state do it put you in? It's nuts. Like when I when I really think about it, I don't like to think about shit too much because it makes me a little emotional. Uh huh. That Sway bought me out at Sway Fest. It's kind of crazy. The first one. The first one, yeah. which is crazy. Like when I met Sway, he was like, "Good to meet you." Whoop de whoop. I was like, "Bro, I didn't met you so many times. You didn't like my uncle for real." Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like everybody uncle. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> you laughing? For I'm, real. I'm laughing because you like you like good to meet you. Cause Sway don't want to hurt nobody. So yeah. he just, oh, "What's up? Good to meet you." You like, <laughs> right? But I like, thought bro, you remember like, me from the last you, time. You've been in my life forever. <laughs> you're my like, father. I you. <laughs> you like, I, I love you. you. I love you, bro. I love you too, man. <laughs> no, but you know, um, why is this nigga crying? <laughs> why did he just get so emotional, bro? You just don't know how much you need to be, bro, for real, bro, and not, bro. Kelly, where's Kelly? <laughs> Security? No, no. Uh, man, your story is so dope, though, man. Uh, I always say Oakland, but you're actually from Berkeley, right? From Berkeley, yeah. Yeah, and you grew up in Berkeley? I grew up in Berkeley, South Berkeley, um, uh -huh. until I was about 12 or 13, and then I moved to the infamous Vallejo, the, that's College how, Park. Now, who else is from College Park as far as artists? I'm not sure about College Park. Uh-huh. Um, I hope my Vallejo homies don't take that the wrong way. Okay, but who my, from Vallejo? My Vallejo history kind of crazy. Okay, uh, but I know the main ones. You know, you got Mac Dre. He from the Crest. I'm like two blocks from the Crest. Uh -huh. E40, of course, is from Vallejo. You got SLB, RBE. Um, it's a lot of legends from out there. I PSD, the driver, used uh -huh. to live across the street from me. Uh -huh. You know, that's a sleeper. Where's Sue from? Sue? I, yeah, I know. I believe. Okay, okay. Or Richmond. Okay, cool. One or two. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah, you was getting excited. Who else used to live next to you? Oh, uh, shit. Um, I had to, I had an Asian neighbor. She was really cool. Okay. <laughs> she used to, Shout she used out to have her. A, she had a uh, like an orange tree. She would give us oranges and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Did y'all used to steal them though? No, nah, yeah, she yeah. gave them to us. Yo, y'all had to steal them. I didn't. No. Nah. You grew up in a church. I did grow up in a church. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't really have a criminal past at all. What? <laughs> That's a crazy. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I got some little stupid stuff on, like some little boots. I don't even want to talk about that shit, boozy. But uh, um, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty straight. You know, I'm a nice, clean guy. Uh huh. Nice, I'm clean guy. Straightforward. Okay, so making that. Did you did you perform as an artist in a church as a musician? Or no. A so coming up, I drummed a little bit. Okay. Um, my family really sang, like sang. Like I can't. To me, I can't really sing because my family could sing. Okay. Like my mama could sing. My granny could sing. My cousins could. Uh, mm -hmm. But I tried to dabble in the drums, and I think that's what led me to making beats because it's just, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and then I could sample stuff. So who, who did you start making beats for other people? No, at first it was just for me on my little weak-ass Casio keyboard. Okay, that shit was so, weak, dog. Little Tinker Toy sounds you had. The Fisher Price, <laughs> my first You know what I'm talking about? Listen, it was it affordable. Right. That was, my, that was my entry level into the game. Right. You know Damn, what I'm saying? Man. So I had my little Casio, and then I had the little... Uh, the little old school karaoke machine with two tapes. Uh -huh. So I'll put one beat on that one tape and then record it onto the other one. Uh -huh. You know, I have my and little system. Plug early. the mic to the the karaoke you machine. You know what's going on. Damn, what kind of mic was that? A Neumann or? A Radio Shack. Damn. Old damn. school Radio Shack. Yeah. It was just a black mic with a wire. Literally. <laughs> that's literally what it was. That's well, hilarious. Like, what, was this in the Hidden Clouds day? That was an EP you put out back in 2014. So how far back we going with this? Ooh, we going middle school with it. I'm talking okay. about. Yeah, I don't even know what year that was. Okay, that was that was. I'm talking about middle school with the Casio in Hidden Clouds days. I think I had. Hopefully, I had upgraded yeah. to a Mac by then. It was okay. five years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you know, dude, these Vallejo dudes. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real, right? Sometimes. Uh, you, you know what I like? Uh, I find fascinated about you uh, from the the Father Figure series, the music that you released that I've gone back and listened to is I, I really feel like your sound is uh, where I think the progression of the Bay, uh, it's an example of um, the progression to where the Bay can go and sonically, because for years I felt, you know, we all, we have a Bay sound, right. but we all just kind of eat off that one sound. And mm -hmm. so whenever somebody steps out of the box a little, um, it helps the Bay grow. And uh, right. so were you concerned, like, how did, where did you, how'd you develop your sound? I think I just developed it from growing up, like you said, in the church, being mm -hmm. around 
my family who could sing, my parents had a delivery service. So it's like a small town. It's like a local, like, FedEx, UPS type delivery service. Oh, I thought you meant weed. Well, I'm trying to get them into that now since it's legal in California. Yeah. Trying to get these licenses and permits straight because it's a bag. These white people getting that bag. We need to get that too. But yeah. back in the day, we used to, um, you know, I used to ride around with them and they were just listening to Pure 102.9 KBLX. Okay. You know, okay. 98 and 1 Kiss. So mm-hmm. I think that's kind of where I got my got my sound. But I grew up on a lot of Guapale, you know, Tony, Tony, Tony. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of people in the Bay that we don't really talk about on a grand level. Like, you know, Sly and the Family Stone is from the Bay. Tower mm-hmm. of Power is from the Bay. Like, it's a lot of melodic stuff going on in mm-hmm. the Bay, and I think, like, I'm just more of that lineage than the other stuff. So. Talk your shit, baby. I like that. Sly and the Family <laughs> Stone. Sly, my Uncle Stan, when they used to come to town back in the day, mm-hmm. my Uncle Stan used to have a, a DJ system, so he used to help make their show tapes. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he would put together their show tapes. They'll hang out. My Uncle Stan was real popular. So, uh, shout out to Uncle Stan. That's aunt, Auntie Shirley's, who's now Kid Capri's auntie as well. Right. That's her husband. That's wow. my first uncle. That's wow. fire. That's um, crazy. Yeah, man. Uh, on this album, you do have Kehlani on here, right? Yes, I do. Um, Love Kehlani. Yeah, y'all, Love Kehlani. Y'all been, like, talk about the Bay Area camaraderie. Mm-hmm. You know, I mentioned I Am Sue. Right. You know, you got Guap Dad. You got All Black. You got all these feet of Kehlani. You got G-Eazy. Right. Um... Uh, talk, Kamaya. You know, is it a camaraderie? For sure. Yeah. And it's one of those things too, where it's like you can kind of tap in with anybody, and they down to fuck with it. You okay. know what I'm saying? It's not too many egos in the room. Like when I get in the room with people, we just create music. We're not going in there with any intentions or anything. We just really in there to vibe, have a good time, and whatever comes of it comes of it. And I think it's really dope when you have artists like the Kalani's who who will fuck with Raj, or mm-hmm. you have G who puts an all black or offset gem on. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, cause I feel like. That's what you're supposed to do when you're from a region and you get this spotlight. Uh-huh. It's like the whole thing is to be the Gucci man of your region and lift people up with you, you know, uh-huh. and that it brings light to, to the section. So I really appreciate it. So how do you tell someone that their sound just doesn't vibe with you, but they're from the same area that you can't get into the studio? Or do you not? Do you just feel it out? You could just be like, hey, yo, your sound don't vibe with me, even though we from the same area. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. That's a he fact. said he's straightforward, okay. That's no, a I fact. Think, no, but real. I, talk, I ain't feeling I, this shit. No, I, I talk to my homies about that, and I think it's like, it's certain ways you could do it. You know what I'm saying? You could you could help somebody just by putting them in a certain position. Like, yo, bro, I can't do this right now. It's not really for me, but I can mm. link you with such and such, or I can put you in touch with such and such, or I can help you work on a song. But right now, because I didn't have plenty of artists straightforward with me, like, yo, that's that sonically, that's not what I'm going, or that's uh, not what I'm doing. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? And I don't mm-hmm. have no problem with that. You're an artist. That's your prerogative. Um, so I think it's just how you say things more than what you say. Word up. Rex Life Raj. Man, tell me this name. Where did, how did I formulate like that? I know um, this wasn't your first choice. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> it's a good for dinosaur show, name. Yeah, it's a dinosaur name. Okay. For sure, just did it so we could steal the uh, Jurassic Park logo. Yeah, okay. just kind of run with that. Okay. Hopefully they don't, don't hit me with no copyright shit. That'd be kind of crazy. But it started. In, it started in high school. It was just a group of dudes, um, and we called ourselves Rexes. You know. And it just kind of started like that. If you a Rex, you just a Rex. I like it. Like and a Tyrannosaurus Rex? If, they, if that's the type of Rex you want to be. Is any, I don't know if there's any other type of Rex. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the only one I've ever heard of. Um, yeah, but uh. it just turned into a collective of dope people. Like, in the group, we got, we got videographers, photographers. We got producers, artists, musicians, everything who, a lot of people who are just like, pushing their own line in different lanes of creativity. So that's kind of what it is right now. Okay. Uh, Let me know if my jacket too loud, too. I feel like my shit making a lot of that little static noise. Oh, I thought you meant the color. <laughs> that, that <too. laughs> no, your jacket's fine. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Uh, yeah, father figure, this is father figure three somewhere out there. Yes. Was your dad in your life? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm very fortunate to have a father in my life. And Lit. not only a father, I had a hell of a dad in my life. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's why I kind of think the way I do and I move the way I do like I said he been a business owner since I've been alive mm-hmm. and that's kind of where I get my business acumen from mm-hmm. that's where I get my entrepreneurship from because mm-hmm. that's the only way I know how to live mm-hmm. so anything I do my end goal is trying to take that game and make it my own and make it profitable for me and my people because yeah. I feel like within this system what are we doing mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like you don't want to work for nobody forever you want to have your own shit you want to have your own business so you could be free you feel me to me freedom is everything and how do you get freedom by owning your own shit and making your own schedule hiring your own people and moving how you want to move so that's that yeah area right there man. Yeah. that's that e40 right you know, there man. Man. Come on, man did your dad talk to you a lot about sex when you were a virgin 
with preventing you from having sex? No, <laughs> not preventing me from having sex. Um, I know my dad is very straightforward. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think my dad back in the day he was, you know what I'm saying, fucking around, and so he don't really uh he don't really bite his tongue too much. I can't remember any specific conversations, but I do remember one day I pulled up to his office and he just had like a bag of condoms. Gotcha. And that was kind of self-explanatory. That was the conversation. Yeah, mm. that's a convo, nonverbal. Yeah. Non-verbal he, he never asked you to have sex or not, or you know, you he, with, he I want might you to have. practice safe sex if you. Oh, you just don't remember, huh? Yeah, I might have, but I play football, so I might have a little CTE, a little sprinkle of that CTE. Okay, I don't damn, remember too wow. much stuff. You have concussion. <laughs> <laughs> I might You're have hilarious. a little sprinkle, of, that sprinkle of it. Can just a sprinkle, huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, like it was a baggie or something. <laughs> yeah. I might have a little drizzle of that CTE. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> what the hell? Hey, homie, you want some of this? CTE. Head trauma. Hey. I'm not gonna lie, I've been playing football my whole life. I didn't got banged up a lot. I ain't, I ain't running from the truth. I know what's going on. You know on. what it is? Come on, man. That's some strong weed. Head trauma? Shit. Damn. Yeah. You, yeah. Ever went yeah. Head up? you ever went head up with a 320 pounder? Mm. I have several times. Really? And I don't think Gosh. that's healthy for your head. So. No, something, I don't think something's so happened. Either. That's what I'm saying. Um, all right, I'm gonna ask you if you're oh. a little. You know, Bay Area is the, the, the fraternity um, in um, Bay Area is so closely tied and knitted, you know, that we, we you know, we might have problems at home, but outside of home, we all ride together, For right? For sure. Uh, so I want to see if you're a little bit conflicted now with um, because you got the falling re- record with Russ, right? And then Russ recently um, punched uh, Guap Dad right. in the head over a, a comment a uh, lyric he said in a song that Russ found offensive, right? Um, and then you know the whole bay was turned upside down. You know the bay get when Lil B got jumped. The right. bay was ready to jump <laughs> everybody that Facts. jumped Lil no, B. For real. Uh, have you talked to Russ about that at all? I hollered at him before the incident, uh-huh. and you feel me. And we had discussed it, and he and you know what I'm saying he made it seem like, you know, he wasn't gonna do what he did. He made it seem like he was just gonna holler at bruh. You feel me? And mm. I thought that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I hollered at some people who knew Keem and tried to put in a word like, yo, some shit finna go down. You feel me? Because me and Keem close, but we not the closest like that. But I know people are ha- who are hella tapped in with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so when that shit went down, I I didn't respect it. You know what I'm you saying? You didn't like, respect it? Nah. But at the same time, you feel me? It's like, you can't... It's hard for me to say, you know what I'm saying? Because as as a man, it's hard for you to put me in the middle of that situation just because I know both these people. These are two grown-ass men, and they going to handle situations how they want to handle it. Yeah, I, can, I wouldn't have handled it that way, but I can't speak for him. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? He's going through what he's going through. He's in his own mindset, and he's doing what he's doing. And then also on the other side, as a man, if you say something, then it ain't you can't expect it. You can't you can't judge what another man's response is going to be to okay. that. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And I'm rocking with Keem all day. I'm rocking with Guap Dad. I got love for Russ. You know what I'm saying? I just think the situation was handled funny. Um, but, you know, I got love for both of them. Okay, there it is. Rex Life Raj, man. How can people reach you if they want to uh, hit you up directly, bro? At Rex Life Raj. Everything R-E-X-X-L-I-F-E-R-A-J. Rex Life Raj on everything. Tap in with me. For like a verse? or Come you, on. You come on, we could do some, some. Got some beef for one. Let's see what we can do. Come on. Ooh. Play in the morning, shade four five, Rex Life Rock. Is this the volume? I can turn it up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh. Oh, this real boom bell time. Uh. Look. Look. Uh. 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 Look. The older I get, it see more of my daddy words resonate. I feel the trauma from my skin tone when I meditate. Feel the anxiety, never know where it's stemming from. Voices in my head be conversating about giving up. Demon and angel on separate shoulders. I listen, I pray for guidance, cause all I wanted was clarity. I don't wanna trade my happiness for prosperity. I wish I could stop all pop's pain temporarily. I wish I had the answers. I wish I had a rubric or blueprint to feeling satisfied every time I get some new shit. I feel like everybody more excited than me. My life is going how I want to now, what more do I need? I read a little self-help, a couple TED Talks, a lot of podcasts, a lot of build-up without a climax. I took a break from social media to get my mind back. The Zuckerbergs of the world got your mind hijacked. I want all of my time back. I should be wanting reparations, not for slavery, but NCAA enslavement. How to start running back, break records, and pack a stadium, but it's a violation to be compensated. Oh, white man in a suit always profit off black talent. Fuck it. More education and counterbalance. H2O by the gallon. It's written in the stars like Aurora Borealis. I'm ready, I welcome challenge, I'm willing to enable. Got rid of the cane, stacking all my money that I get in legitimate ways while praying for the homies who can't do the same. Hey, no, I'm still down and I never change. 
Cause who I'm fucking with if I ain't fucking with them guys I always been myself, I never needed the disguise Funny acting bitch, see me now and be mesmerized But when I didn't have it, wouldn't look me in my eyes I cleansed all my fears, baby, I was baptized Soon as I stopped looking for that God in the skies You can see the Holy One was looking in my eyes The Holy One, yeah Looking in his eyes That was fire oh! That was real fire <laughs> I got another one. We can keep going. I yeah, fuck I got, it. I got Dr. Phil over there. Maybe <laughs> bring him in. Bring yeah. Dr. Phil I in. I got Dr. It. Phil right here. Yeah, sway busy. Yeah, it's all good. No, no, when somebody on. tell you, you I got Dr. Phil, Phil outside. Dr. Phil outside. I want him to see this. He right there. Yeah, no, the rest. Oh, come on, oh, Dr. Phil, Phil is here, baby. Come on, hug oh, the seat, man. Oh my God, the real Dr. Dr. Phil. Phil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't somebody's rap name. Yeah. I thought you was kicking me out the studio. He was like, we got somebody here. No, well, you know, this is a friend of the show right here. This I don't, don't want to rap nothing too deep. I don't want him to psychoanalyze me. No, no, that's why I had him in. This is Rex oh, Life good. Raj, oh, Dr. Is Phil. this insane. Uh, you know that, have I feel a seat. like I'm home when I come You are here. home, man. I was, I was sitting at the Billboard Awards um, last year uh -huh. from Roe. Um, you know what? I thought that was necessary to right. say. Take the picture. Sitting next to me, front row, was his son. Yes, yeah, oh, really? sat next to you. Yeah, he sat right next to me. We had a long conversation. Yeah, he you texted know? me and said, he's sitting next to you. I said, well, you got to say hi. He yeah. said, I don't want to bother him. I said, he, trust me. Yeah. He's friendly. Talk to him. Yeah. That's cool, and he man. did. As soon as he said, what up? I'm like, Arr! No, I'm just joking. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just joking. Hey, Dr. Phil, man, um, I don't know if in all your years of doing interviews, if you ever had a, uh, a kid freestyle. Style, right or rap right next to you um i thought maybe he could kick this verse let's see what you hear and you could psychoanalyze and profile him based on the lyrics he says first off let me clarify that this is insane <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i don't know if most people would just say that on the record but i, I am my heart is fluttering i'm sitting next to the dr phil <laughs> you thought it was like somebody else like a, a rapper or something well you swear he was like dr phil outside who you thought i didn't was? know what was going on because it was so abrupt <laughs> Man, Dr. The Phil real is doctor, there, man. Phil. This is it, man. Life so he, is insane. He got season oh, eighteen. Yeah. Season season eighteen. This is a, That's a right. veteran right here, man. A Dr. Mm. Phil. So you got something for him? Let's do it. They, they right. drop me on you. Here okay. We go. All right. All right. Mm. You got nervous now. <laughs> shit, I'm doing that shit. Look. Okay. Look. Look. Hey. If I'm speaking in general, I've learned to take you niggas anything but literal. This shit feel like a Negro spiritual when you in need of miracles. I reach into the depths of my soul to give you material to grow it. I left it all in the open. I cannot mess with you if you ain't on shit. I'm heavy enough. I swear all that extra weight on me be too severe. Plus my AC diggity still torn from my senior year. Hey, partially. Lately I've been trying to live in harmony. Been watching all my thoughts, they be alarming me. My niggas got the pharmaceuticals like heat a pharmacy. And give it to your boy for the effort like it ain't harming me. I get my shit straight from the real plug. Crazy how faux love come with the real drugs. 6 a.m. I ain't slept, I'm still up. Is it my chick or the weed? I'm still buzzed. Lost some money in that crypto, but I still got bands. You run up on me with that fuck shit, I still got hands. I'm working smarter, not harder. What you do with your events? I reinvested in myself in hopes that my shit enhanced. Now look at me, big and black as hell. Somewhere out in France, hella euros in my pants. Bitch, it's still me and Lance. With my Luigi ass, all hell the green. Bitch, I need a bag, hoard it all with my greedy ass. My pockets on a leaky ass, thick as hell. 2019, you niggas sick as hell. I'm sick of sparing you weak niggas. I always bite my tongue in moments that I could teach niggas cause I ain't trying to hurt y'all feelings not as fuck y'all feelings look I got the sauce that I see I'm appropriating you niggas local hating how many fans you got in Copenhagen I missed your call because I had engagements I was slamming a cheese Danish with a chick that's Danish and she think I'm famous I guess she got her reasons it's crazy cause all my famous homies got hella demons I master shit ton of that cash still need deeper meaning everything that's shining ain't a diamond it ain't what it's seeming you don't live by shit that you tell me so it don't feel right apply all of that Twitter philosophy to your real life that misguided anger inside you i hope it heal right i'm rolling to the wheel slice i'm built for it tough what you built like you built like a hoopty hating on your own skin you feel like a ooh. i bet you she knew me before you introduced me that big black nigga eating sushi and sipping green smoothies hey a little virtue signal before i leave the building i tell her she should catch a uber for she catch a feeling hey. oh whoa rex like brian what it do? <laughs> I know Dr. Phil ain't never been asked to analyze a verse. Ah, this is a, a new segment. Yeah, that's a new segment. This so is, 
this segment called Insanity. Yeah, yeah. What's so based on what you were able to catch, man? <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> I respect you probably can. Yeah. No, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, Rex, Rex Life Raj, man. Um, man, you're the truth, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate man, that. Man. Thank you for having me, for Absolutely, real. Absolutely, man. Um, I think you you know, you mix a lot of your realness in your in your in your similes and your metaphors, and I hear you right. when you say you got off of social media and and all these Zuckerberg, what you said of the Zuckerberg um, line of person? Zuck, the Zuckerbergs of the world got your mind hijacked. I want all of my time back. Yeah. Um, and we talked about this on our show of how social media hijacks the minds of the youth. And, and, he, yeah, and, and put sure. all sorts of information in their heads and not even think of for themselves any longer. Right. You know, uh, right, Dr. Phil? Yeah, you know, I, I, I do want to comment on what he was, he, was, he was just rapping here because there's a big difference between somebody that – gets on the mic and tries to say things that rhyme versus mm. somebody that gets on the mic and says things that are real. Mm. And <laughs> that just is a big, big difference. And you really come from the heart with what you're talking about. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That's, and it's it's very obvious that it's authentic. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate it. Cry, Rex Life. Come come I'm, I'm, I'm trying to don't, cry. Don't no, bring it out of me. Dr. Phil, bro. Let's say this man has been doing I don't even think this is real right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wake up in seven seconds. So. Yeah, but no, nah, man. That's just impressive. Dang it's yeah. impressive yeah, really that, you, that, you, that you're able to be that, that transparent yeah. and that vulnerable and... That's impressive. Thank you, man. You know, he's going to do a, he's going to do another project soon. He wants to ask you live on air, is it okay if he takes this piece where you're talking Ooh. about him and use it in his project? Damn right. There it is. There you go. Rex Life Rods, man. That's love, man. Um, pick up the new project, uh, Father Figure 3, somewhere out there. The Somewhere Out There tour starts November the 11th. Next week. Next week. What's your first date? Boston. Boston, November Boston. the 11th. Um, and then you can pick up the project right now. Yes, it's, it's, on, it's everywhere. It's on all DSPs. Um, it's just not on cassette tapes. Okay, what song you want to hear from it? Ooh, let's play Burgundy Regal. Burgundy Regal, track eight. All right, here it is. Rex Life Raj, thanks for coming through, brother. Thank you for having me.